Hey everybody, I'm Tommy. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I made a really small workbench with a really robust top. Whether it's your first time here or even if you've been here before, welcome to One Minute Workbench. I don't have the workbench with me because I've already delivered it. I made the workbench for my girlfriend's mom. She's in her 70s, but she's still really active and likes to take on projects and likes to build stuff. But she doesn't have that much room in her garage. I figured if I couldn't make it really big, I would at least give it a really nice top. This first part of the build is pretty simple. I'm just following the plans that I've created and cutting out lots of rectangles. Here, I need to make a notch, and I'm just using the piece that uh, is gonna fit into the notch to draw the markings. People often ask me why I use pen nails, glue, and screws, and ask if I could just get away with, you know, one of those things or maybe two of those things. What I'm really after is glue in the joint. But pen nails do a good job of temporarily holding everything together, giving me time to add screws. And what the screws do is they prevent me from having to use clamps so I can keep moving on with the project. Here, I'm using this board to draw a line all the way around the outside of the cabinet. And what this line is gonna do is it's gonna give me a target uh, to shoot for because I'm putting a divider right in the center of the cabinet. And with this line, I'll be able to know where that divider is so that when I shoot my pin nails, they'll actually go into the divider. So here's a place where I don't want screws to show, and I also don't have a good way to clamp it, so instead, I'm just setting some heavy weights on it. Building drawers can be pretty tedious, but a pen nailer will go a long way uh, towards making it an easier process. Another good thing about pin nails is they're barely visible, and if you misfire, they're real easy to break off. Using a combination square allowed me to easily get consistent markings for setting up the drawer slides. Using a pick to poke a small hole exactly where you want a drill bit to start or a screw to go is a good way to make sure that things are properly aligned. Thank you. 
When I first did a test fit for this shelf, I realized it was a little wider at one end than the other. So I just used a hand plane to shave it down so it would fit properly. After the sides of the shelves had some time to dry, I came back and carefully measured, drilled pilot holes, added glue, and then screws to the back of the shelves in order to make sure they were secured. Laying the cabinet flat on its back allowed me to carefully align the drawer faces and ensure a good reveal all the way around. It was then though that I noticed I had made a small mistake when cutting those drawer faces. I added these scraps of wood to boost the drawers forward, which would make it easier for me to align things during the glue up. Here I'm adding the clearance holes for the screws that are gonna hold the top in place. And these are oversized, and that's important because the top is going to expand and contract over time. And so these oversized holes will allow it to expand and contract. If, for example, you didn't oversize these holes, the, the top would crack. There's probably a lot of different ways you could make a top for a workbench like this and probably the most time-consuming way to do it is the way I did it. I started with these giant beams and cut them down into the individual members that are going to be glued together to form the top. Really, the only reason I was doing this is because I had these giant beams on hand and I had been looking for a project 
where I could use these up. Otherwise, it probably would have been a lot easier just to buy lumber that's already closer to the right size. These beams have been sitting for a long time and the ends have started to split. So what I'm doing here is just cutting those split ends off. So the process for cutting these beams down into smaller pieces and then squaring them up, again, was pretty time consuming. I think it took about three hours to get the 10 pieces that I needed to make up the top. So the top is comprised of 10 individual boards, but based on the maximum width my planer can accept, I'm going to make the top in two sections of five boards each. And then later I'll come back and glue these two sections together to finally complete the top. So here, using the planer does a good job of correcting any minor misalignments that might have occurred in between the individual members. And it's also a good way to make sure that both halves of the top are the exact same thickness. So when you do a big glue up like this, if you apply clamps from only one side, you can end up with a bow in the top. So applying clamps from both sides and checking it with a straight edge can help you to eliminate or reduce that bow.
So it seems like right along the glue line, there's a little bit of a high spot. Since the top, when glued together, is too large to fit through my power planer, using a good old-fashioned hand plane makes short work of cleaning up the high spot. When you make a big top like this, it might be tempting to cut all of the members to the exact length that the top is going to be as a, you know, as the final result. However, it's very difficult to glue those up in a way where all the ends stay aligned. So starting off with something oversized allows you to easily cut the ends so that they're all aligned after the glue up. Um, another thing it does is it allows you to choose kind of your favorite part of the glue up. So say for example, there's a wood grain uh, pattern that you like or don't like or knots that you like or don't like. You know, it just gives you a little more wiggle room to choose what part you want to keep and what part you want to throw away. So off camera, I sanded the project, applied six coats of polyurethane, and added the drawer handles to the drawer faces. And I skipped over that because there are so many videos on my channel where I show how to do that stuff. Uh, if you don't know how to do that stuff though, check out the other videos on my channel. There's, there's lots of good stuff there. As I mentioned earlier, the clearance holes for these screws that hold the top in place are oversized, which allows the top to expand and contract over time as the seasons change. But another important thing is that you don't go crazy when tightening these screws down. If you make them too tight, that will also prevent the top from expanding and contracting. So you want them snug, but you don't want to go nuts with it. So this design is basically something my girlfriend's mom came up with and I thought it was great for her, but I didn't think I would really care for it myself. Um, however, since delivering it, I actually miss it and have been thinking about building one for myself. It's just nice to have something that moves around so easily, yet it's still just got that like crazy robust top on it. Anyway, if you want to make one of these for yourself, head to oneminuteworkbench.com uh, where I have plans available. And thanks for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think about this project down in the comment section. And if you have any questions about it, hit me up on Instagram. If you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe. And of course, until the next time I see you, I hope you have fun building something. Last plan. Right, right, right. Got you. <laughs> I'd like to tell you about this project here. What is it? Well, this old lady would love to have any kind of a table other than the kitchen counter or the dining room table or the fireplace bricks that I've broken for drilling, sawing, hammering, just her own private little workshop. Granny's craft table. <laughs> With some drawers for all her little tools. Files, sandpaper, and whatnots. Alright. You didn't feel that. Yeah. <laughs>